So today it's all about the Felix Audio 20th Anniversary Edition Arioso 300B amplifier. It doesn't look like anything else. It's, it's very, uh, I think, understated. It's muted in its appearance. But, you know, those uh, angled uh, output transformers, those glistening tubes, you kind of know something's up and something is definitely up. Uh, before I go any further, Felix Audio is, is a Polish company. Uh, they build all their products in Poland and use local vendors for pretty much all the parts, including the output transformers. You know, you think you know. You think you know the sound of a speaker, in this case, my Klipsch Cornwall 4s. I've been living with them for over a year. I've used them in countless reviews. And yet here, with this amplifier, I'm, I'm reevaluating what I think of these speakers. First, because they seem more agile, you know, lighter on their feet, subtle dynamic shifts in acoustic music are just so much more, I'm so much more aware of them. So I didn't know anything about Felix Audio. It was my friend Herb Reichert, writes for Stereophile. He reviewed one of the uh, Felix Audio's headphone amplifiers, and they make a whole line of headphone amplifiers, all tube headphone amplifiers. And he was gushing about it. He was just going on like, this is it. This is like one of the best things he's ever heard in his life, any kind of amplifier. And he's been talking about it so much and so enthusiastic about it. I said, yeah, I wanted, I'd like to review something, but do they make any uh, amplifiers for speakers? Well, in fact, they do. <laughs> well, they made an Arioso, a different Arioso, a 2A3 amp. Uh, and that was their first production amplifier for speakers. But that's been replaced with this model, the 300B. So I said, oh, this is new, it's just coming out. You know, sign me up, I wanna get this amplifier in for review. It's being distributed in the US by Upscale Audio. Great company, great distributor, great brick and mortar dealer. So I got in touch with them, said I'd love to review this thing, and they shipped it over, and boy am I glad I requested this amplifier, because it really is one that's a keeper. It was one of those uh, experiences where I was playing familiar recordings and I was finding new joy, new joy in this music that I knew so well. So like unexpected joy, and does it, does it really get better than that as a reviewer or as, or as just an audiophile, right? That's what this is all about. You have a collection of music, whether it's physical or virtual, and some of it is transitory, comes and goes, but some of it that lingers, it stays with you for years, and you play it and you hear it on different systems and it, changes, it affects you in different ways, but sometimes when you hear it, it's one of those, <laughs> whoa, <laughs> uh, yeah, like that. That kind of experience, and that's what really gets my juices flowing. The tube complement is pretty straight ahead. The power tubes are Electro Harmonics Gold 300Bs. The driver tube is a 6SN7, and there's a tube rectifier. Now, uh, I want you to look inside under the hood, so to speak, and I think the build quality is truly extraordinary. It's, it's like a work of art in there. Uh, by the way, I'm, I apologize for the noise. It's again, it's a noisy day here in Brooklyn. But anyway, yeah, look at the build quality of this thing. It's beautiful. It's so it's handcrafted point to point wiring. Oh, the remote. The remote is really special. First of all, it's a wooden remote. And I don't mean like wood trim. I mean, it's a solid chunk of wood. And the way it just fits in your hand, it, it feels comfortable. It's light. It has just the right amount of actual controls on it, volume up, volume down. There's three inputs, by the way, three RCA inputs, and uh, a mute and a power on off. That's it. That's all she wrote. And that's all I need. <laughs> what else is there really, right? Tube life is uh, estimated at 8,000 hours for those 300 Bs. That's a good long run. Those are the expensive tubes. The 6S and 7s are uh, much less costly and actually they can also impact the sound of the amplifier so if you're into tube rolling you don't need to roll the 300 Bs so quick you could do it with the rectifier and also with those 6s and 7s and get a different flavor but the tubes as supplied uh, are electro harmonics for the 6s and 7s as well and i think yeah i wasn't i wasn't itching to do any tube rolling so for what it's worth and you know 
I, I, I basically, when I review an amplifier with tubes, I want to hear it with what the manufacturer is supplying because that's the way most people are going to hear it. So the speakers that I used for the, over the course of this review were the Klipsch Cornwall 4s. Very high sensitivity speaker, just an obvious match. So that's where I started. But that's actually where I ended because I didn't really have any other speakers that seemed like a good fit. The only one that could have fit, sort of, kind of, maybe, were the Dyne Audio Heritage Specials. Now those are $7,000 speakers, but they're very low sensitivity design, 85 dB for one watt. So it wouldn't make sense for someone to buy a 300B amp and then use it with these speakers. It's just, yeah. So I, I never got around to it because I was just digging the sound of the clips with the Arioso. So I was kind of sticking with that combination. And I also want to get this out of the way really early, is this amplifier is not a soft sounding amplifier, a romantic sounding amplifier. It's not voluptuous and it's not that sort of amplifier at all. It doesn't sound like a solid state amplifier, but it is not a stereotypical old, you know, 1950s kind of tube sound. Yeah, when I reviewed uh, last year, when, when I reviewed the Macintosh C22 preamp that was that specific one I had was built in 1962, I think, uh, that was very soft, very round, very rich sounding amp, preamp that is. No, that's not what's going on here. This sound is all about, well, speed, articulation, but beautiful tone, but nothing exaggerated about it. Just a very pure see-through quality that was highly, highly addicting. I just, I, you know, it was one of those amps. I kept saying, I got to stop listening and go to sleep. So I'm listening way into the night, and yet I kept listening because I was just enjoying it so much. So as I mentioned earlier, there's three sets of RCA inputs, and that's it. That's all she got. So it's analog in and analog out. There's no digital stuff going on in there, no digital inputs, no Bluetooth, no room correction, no DSP. It's just an amplifier. The output, by the way, is uh, for the speaker connectors, is you have two taps. There's a 4 ohm tap and an 8 ohm tap. They do sound different. Um, I, I went back and forth and back and forth many times because I kept thinking, I'm trying to nail this, but basically I preferred the 4 ohm tap just because it was more, um, had more spring in its step than the 8 ohm tap. Now that's going to vary from speaker to speaker, so there's no right or wrong. When you buy an amp like this, you just have to experiment and see which, see which one you would settle on because they both sounded good. They just sounded different. The, the 8 ohm tap was just a little more laid back and yeah, I said, yeah, maybe I like this because it is more laid back, but then I go back to the 4 ohm and I'd say, no, I like this because it's just more, it's more like live music in its um, shading and dynamics and life. So 4 ohms is where it was for me. For the Cornwalls, which by the way are rated at 8 ohms, so there you go. So you can't use the impedance rating of the speaker to say, okay, this is an 8 ohm. You gotta, you gotta listen. <laughs> you gotta listen for yourself and decide which works for you. People ask all the time, so Steve, do you have like certain albums that you use with all of your reviews and so you know where you stand? Yeah, of course there is, and, but I don't want to refer to it every time because it would be kind of boring for you guys. But this one record, this one, and I've referred to it before, Holly Cole's Temptation album, which is uh, all Tom Waits material. And it's so great. And I've played this album hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times, or well, songs from it at least, and I never tire of it. I mean, that's incredible right there. And I'm not saying it's the best recording ever. It's not like a reference quality recording. It's the music in it and the way it moves and the arrangement is just so great. But anyway, I'm playing it over the Arioso, and it was as if she was singing into a better microphone, or she was just more expressive than I usually hear her. And she's pretty darn expressive. But anyway, her mic, her tonality, her voice were just up a few notches from, from what I usually expect, even with really good systems. But at this point, I decided to compare the Arioso to uh, my past labs XA25. So I, I, I switched the system around to do that. And the first thing I noticed was 
that the sound of the, the solid state combination, the past electronics, was was warmer, just tonally warmer overall, less alive is another way of saying it. Um, and the low end, the bass on this recording had more low end drive to it, more punch, just kicked harder through those 15 inch woofers on the Cornwall 4s. So yeah, when you're comparing 25 watts, solid state watts, uh, which go down to 50 watts for 4 ohms, uh, it definitely feels more potent, more powerful than 8 watts. And when I played uh, all sorts of music fairly loud, the the power advantage of the XA25 was, was obvious, right? As I pushed those 8 watts through these very sensitive speakers, yeah, I didn't want to like party with these with this amp and these speakers. I, I didn't want to play it loud, loud. And I could more comfortably play the XA25 louder, put it that way. So yes, there's a reason. But in terms of purity, uh, being there, <laughs> feeling the music, I would say the Arioso was, was, a, was a notch or two ahead of the XA25. Moving along, I played this. This is the Rolling Stones Still Life. This is a live recording from 1981. And one of the things that's great about this recording is, well, first of all, if you think about it, it's 40 years ago. And this is, you know, well into their career. So they were already old 40 years ago. But anyway, but, but what's amazing about this recording is that Bill Wyman, the original bass player, is still in the band. And when you compare the Bill Wyman Rolling Stones to the post-Bill Wyman Rolling Stones, there is definitely a lack. Uh, there's something lost without Bill Wyman because his bass playing was just so perfect. I mean, he, Charlie Watts is an amazing drummer, the perfect Rolling Stones drummer. And thank God there's only been that one drummer, Charlie Watts. But Bill Wyman just set these grooves, you know. Keith Richards could dance on top of those grooves, but... But Bill Wyman was like setting them down. <laughs> anyway, so getting in touch with this record, I was thinking, you know what? This actually sounds way better than I thought. It just has that thing because Bill Wyman's there, but also the, the sound quality is better than I thought. And it's got that Jagger swagger to the, to the performances that are just so good. And again, somehow the Arioso was just putting all of this in exactly the right perspective. And yeah, this is actually a pretty good, <laughs> pardon the, the, the way of putting it, but this is actually a pretty good late period Rolling Stones uh, live album, late from 40 years ago, but a late period Rolling Stones live record. Have they ever topped this as a performance? Not to me, not to me. I mean, I think their best days are in the 60s, obviously, and early 70s. But this is a special record. Speaking of forgotten gems, then there's this one. Paul McCartney's uh, Back in the USSR. That's what it says in Russian there. And uh, this was recorded uh, in a studio, live to two track, in Russia, in the Soviet Union, Russia, in 1988. And it's basically Paul McCartney's rock and roll record. Like there's the John Lennon rock and roll record where he just plays his favorite songs of the 50s and 60s. That's what he, that's what Paul did here. He played uh, his favorite uh, songs from his rock and roll past and just sounded like he was having a blast doing it. And uh, Paul McCartney records are kind of iffy, a lot of them sound quality wise. And I wouldn't say this is stellar or audio file or anything. But it's just the pleasure that he has in revisiting these songs that got me going. And his voice is still really good and really, really strong in 1988. Yeah, no, he, he knocked out 20, he, he recorded, I don't think that they didn't all come out on this record, but he recorded 20 songs in two days. And that freshness of just going into a studio and nailing it, putting it out, you can sense that in his performance. I mean, if he never wrote a note if he was just a great rock and roll singer, he probably would have had a hell of a career. So I had fun, you know? <laughs>
it's one of those yes I love my job I had fun doing this review because every record I played the familiar ones and the unfamiliar ones and the stuff I was just streaming over my favorite radio station FIP French Public Radio it was a delight to listen to I smiled a lot my name is Steve Guttenberg this is the Audiophiliac Daily Show if you like what I do if you get some kind of vicarious kicks from watching me get all excited about audio please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel you could also uh, check out my Patreon at p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash audiophiliac you could also follow me on Instagram I'm doing like quick little videos more like rants for Instagram for IGTV you can follow me on Instagram at steve.guttenberg and also Twitter at audiophiliac man but well, you know while you're here please check out the playlist there's playlists for speaker reviews and headphone reviews and many many more electronics reviews plus interviews with so many incredible people so many incredible people that have passed through this and now I am about to get my second uh, vaccination and I will be able to get out into the world more and do interviews with real people face to face it's going to be incredible and that should be showing up hopefully maybe later this month no probably in early April I will be starting to do real real interviews and uh, now I can say my work here is at last complete thank you again for watching and I really do hope to see you back here again very very soon bye bye